Podcasts. In this video, we'll show you how to get started with Aruba 6100 CX series switches using the command line interface, or CLI for short. The first thing to note is that 6100 CX series switches have USB-C console ports. The console cable is not included inside the box, so you'll have to source your own USB-A to USB-C data cable in order to connect. You will also need to download and install the USB-C console driver. Browse to asp.arubanetworks.com and log in. Click on Software and Documents and search for USB console driver. Download the driver for USB console port and install it. Now that you've got your cable and the driver installed, we're ready to get started. Power up the switch. Connect the USB cable from your laptop to the switch console port. Check your COM port by going to Device Manager and expanding the port section. Start PuTTY, set connection type to serial, change your COM port number to match your settings, change the speed to 115,200 and click on Open. Press Enter a couple of times and, presuming the switch was powered up a few minutes ago and is still in its factory default state, you should be presented with a login prompt. If not, give it a few minutes to finish the boot up process. The initial username is admin and the password is blank. You will be prompted to set the password and will be placed in manager command context as signified by the hash prompt. Let's run a show run command to review the current config. Here you can see the admin user account as a member of administrators group and with their password set. NTP server is already configured and NTP protocol is enabled. 6100CX switches only support a single VRF so your SSH and HTTP server will run in default VRF. In higher-end CX series models, you can run your management protocols in a dedicated management VRF. VLAN 1 is configured and all ports are untagged members of VLAN 1. Spanning tree is also enabled by default. Port numbering uses the following nomenclature. Interface space member, which refers to switch stack member number. Note that for standalone switches, or 6100s, which are not stackable, this will always be 1. Forward slash slot, which refers to module and is always 1 on non-modular switches such as 6100s. Forward slash port number. Let's configure VLAN 1 with a static IP address for switch management. Type config and press enter to enter the configuration context. Type interface VLAN 1 and press enter. Let's call it management VLAN interface. Let's disable DHCP and set a manual IP address. Type exit and press enter to go one step back in your configuration context. Let's go into physical interface 1 configuration by typing interface 1 slash 1 slash 1. Set the description against this port. Make sure it's an access port in VLAN 1 and that it's not administratively down. Type end and press enter to exit out of the configuration mode. Type write mem and press enter to save this configuration. Let's connect to the switch inband interface using the Ethernet cable. Change your laptop wide adapter IP settings to match the same network we set up on the switch. Connect the Ethernet cable from your laptop to switch port number 1. Open up a new PuTTY session and set SSH as the connection type. Type in the IP address you set on the switch and click on open. Accept the host key and you will be presented with a login prompt. Use the credentials we specified earlier in the setup to log in. Run show version command to check the currently installed firmware version. Open your browser and go to asp.arubanetworks.com and log in. Search for 6100 and filter by software as the file type. Download the latest firmware. Let's update the firmware, but using the web GUI interface. Open your browser and browse to the switch management IP address. Make sure you use HTTPS. Log in using the previously set up credentials. Click on the firmware tile. Drag and drop the downloaded firmware image into the upload area and click on upload. Once the upload has completed, you will be able to see the latest firmware under the primary image version but the switch will still be running using the old version. You will need to click on reboot in order for the new firmware to be used. Make sure you select the new firmware to boot into. Allow about 5 minutes for the switch to reboot before trying to log back in. If you look at the firmware tile, you will be able to see that you are now running the latest version of the software. 
Let's configure a couple of VLANs. Log back into the CLI using PuTTY. We are going to create two more VLANs, one for data and one for voice, and then we will configure interfaces 2 to 11 on the switch to carry both of these VLANs. Lastly, we will configure port 12 to be a trunk port carrying all three VLANs. Enter these commands. Config, VLAN 2, let's call it data. Create VLAN 3 for voice. Voice command will enable LLDP Media Endpoint Discovery Protocol to enable VoIP phones to auto-configure VLAN tagging. Exit. Let's configure ports 2 to 11. Make them all trunk ports with data VLAN as native or untagged. VLAN 3 will be tagged by default. Exit. Let's configure our last uplink interface, making it a trunk. Enable all VLANs on it and we'll untag VLAN 1. Now let's have a look at our port VLAN configs by using the show VLAN port command. Port 1 is configured as an access port on VLAN 1, our management VLAN. Ports 2 to 11 are configured as trunk ports. Untagged on VLAN 2, the data VLAN, and tagged on VLAN 3, the voice VLAN. Port 12 is also a trunk port, but untagged on VLAN 1, and tagged on VLANs 2 and 3. And there you have it. A quick guide on how to get started with Aruba CX6100 series switches using the CLI and Web GUI. For more information on Aruba CX switches, visit the library at phoenixpro.club.